my friends happy friday thanks everybody for joining we are here with the portfolio reviews my name is julia maselskov and this is my channel if you want your portfolio review please make sure to follow me on my instagram page and just send me a link to your portfolio for the next week's review all right my friends thanks so much for joining i see there are a couple people in the chat already jotirmia philippe is here and sadman is here very nice to have you guys here thank you so much for joining today we're going to be looking at five portfolios from five amazing designers and we're going to be trying to kind of understand what are the things that uh, make a good portfolio and also um, I'm going to show you guys a portfolio of a friend of mine that um, that I thought he had really really amazing project descriptions let me just quickly um, double check on that let me know in the chat guys how you have been doing and what you guys are up to how was your week so far sadman is saying how are you myself scott i'm good thank you so much okay so first of all um let's take a look at my friend's site um I want to dive in with you guys to just start to understand how to describe the project and what's the information that's necessary basically to, um, you know, to have a successful project description and so on. So my friend Corey Hall is, um, is a graphic designer who has worked for a standard, uh, Stanford Graduate School of Business and he um, has done art direction there and um, he's just an amazing designer and that's the reason why I wanted to kind of share with you guys his project descriptions first so you kind of get an understanding of you know what's what makes a good description so let's jump into his first project here uh, for Stanford and or actually let's jump in one, into one of the more commercial projects let's take a look at this fauna home project right so if we take a look at this we have this intro image happening here at the top and then we have a description that's pretty good um, here this is really interesting to put into a case study target audience traits so what is who is the target audience for this product um, that's something I rarely see in in portfolio case studies from um, portfolios that I'm reviewing on the daily basis basically here we have a very clear target audience defined for um you know for this brand and we have um young professionals who take pride in their home ages 25 to 55 and we have even an annual income um of you know how much they make a year just to understand who is this person who is supposed to buy the product um, then you're trying to understand which store that they go into what are you know the products that are in their immediate environment what are the products that are actually already successfully targeting you know this specific audience so um, the secondary uh, target audience here is consumers looking for an inclusive shopping experience super cool no I think um, I think Corey is doing a really great job here and here uh, he's even breaking it down to the um, to the persona. So he's trying to find the people that he wants to imagine while designing this brand. So I think this is really really helpful, especially if you guys are just starting off a project. Um, it's a really really amazing um, you know way to start. Hi Nimla, good to see you. And Felipe saying nice shirt. Thank you so much. NASA represent. Um, yeah, I'm all here for the space and love the space, love, uh, you know, planets and stars and all that stuff. So, um, and yeah, so, so I love the way he's kind of uh, manifesting here who the brand, who the brand is designed for, right? That can help you understand, you know, um, that you're working with a specific audience and that you have a specific target to um, go for. And the reason why this is so important to put into your portfolio is that if your future employer will ever look at your portfolio, they will see that you actually thought about these things and that you did just, didn't just do a visual design for something, but you actually kind of, um, you know, you went into depth, you really tried to understand your audience and you have created 
you know, based on those facts that you found out about the specific audience. Then, another thing that I noticed here in the beginning, which is super, super cool. So this is not even, uh, you know, a, a real client project. I think I think it's just a um, course that, that Corey was taking in school and it's a package design uh, course. So um, I love this little, um, you know, illustration, um, not illustration, but animation in the beginning that kind of already sets the mood and shows a little bit more um, about the um, about the brand. And here he also put some um, genera generational values and interests that are also playing a big role in, um, in, um, in the branding process. Then here we have target audience values, so uh, family oriented, stylish, quality, wellness. I think that that's really, really interesting to understand and see to be able to design something. And if you look at the final product, you will find all of those traits in this product, in this design, in the selected colors, in the selected typefaces, in the way the visuals are presented as well. So I think this is a really, really good way to kind of um, put together a case study based on research. Sadman is saying that the type is, is so small. I think the product is just pretty big. So um, once you have the product in your hand, you will see that um, that the type is not very small. And I think I think he did a really great job here. Um, I think the typeface is really good size and there is a great hierarchy happening here. You will be able to see what it is, ceramics text head, mountable and so on. And everything's pretty well legible. So um, I think here he did a really great job creating a great hierarchy um, and selecting the typefaces, colors and typeface sizes as well. So um, I think this is really, really amazing to be honest. It's a really, really cool project. But now we are here to review five of your guys' portfolios. So let's close this one for now. <clears throat> or actually, if you guys want, I can share that with you so that you can uh, basically take a look. And um, yeah, and maybe get some inspiration from that. All right, so the first one up today is going to be Carissa. Carissa is um, looks like Carissa does a lot of photography and also murals. So let's take a look at Carissa's portfolio. Um, to start with, this is the landing page. I love the way you put the logo here. It's a very minimalistic, very cool looking logo that I feel like works really well with what you're doing. Now let's take a look at the projects. We have four projects here. One is uh, from 2020. They're all from 2020. So they're all the very, very fresh projects, let's say. Um, so she has photography and she has work. Let's see what work is. Okay, so work is, um, okay, it's interesting because you name photography, photography, and then you name work, work. I'm wondering if there's a way to kind of I find a better definition for your work here because um, this is uh, these are Adobe Daily Creative Challenges. So you're doing graphic design and photography. So maybe instead of writing work here, I would name it graphic design. So you're doing photography and graphic design. And then we have the contact page. I think that will be not too overloaded. I think it will be a great menu here, a little great selection to pick from. So you could start off looking at your photography. It seems like your photography has been there a little bit longer since you have a couple more projects. All right, lips. I have always loved the soft, elegant look of film photography. What else is soft and elegant? Lips. Very nice. So you're taking photos of lips. What I'm noticing right away is um, that you have those little corners here that kind of stick out a little bit. I would make sure maybe with Photoshop <clears throat> to cover them up so you can really concentrate on your photography and do not kind of, <clears throat> um, sorry guys, I, ha I have to take a sip of coffee, it's Friday. It's Friday and, um, and my voice is already gone. <laughs> um, <clears throat> Yeah, so I would definitely make sure that those corners are not showing up because right now we have everything pretty dark. These corners 
they are the lightest in the room basically they are the lightest in the whole space that I'm looking at and they're taking a lot of my attention so those little things will really really make it a lot better if you remove them here as well same thing happening very nice no the photos are awesome <clears throat> I'm just looking at the presentation because the presentation is also a big big um, part of you know of your portfolio <clears throat> all right let's take a look at photography and let's take a look at your mural so I think in your lips project it will be really nice to have a little bit more description and to know what your thoughts were behind this except for that lips are soft and elegant I'm sure that there there are diff different um, things that you thought you know creating the project what is the purpose for it can it be something used um, for a company that kind of um, you know works either um, either in art or maybe it's a company that produces some kind of lip balm or something like that so I'm wondering who do you want to attract with this artwork because your portfolio is here to um, to attract the client right why otherwise you would um, put up a, a portfolio you want to work you want to make money with your with your designs and with your photography right so who do you want to attract I'm wondering and that's something you, you should think about first before you even create projects and for your portfolio you should think about the, the person you want to work with the client you want to work with do you want to work for a company for corporate do you want to work for an agency do you want to work for yourself as a photographer that's also a, a way to kind of um, exist right what is the purpose of your portfolio that's that's what I'm thinking and uh, with that try to give a little more intention to all of your projects right so why exactly have you worked on this I know you have been experimenting with um, with film photography but can it be something you know that that's being used in our everyday life that people would pay for right I would I would think about that I would think about ways to kind of commercialize your artwork okay ARCC mural let's take a look at that these photos are of the mural that was put up at Anoka Ramsey Community College that I was lucky enough to take part in. Okay, it seems like you were painting the mural also. I I'm wondering if you did because um, you're saying that these photos are of the mural. I could see that, but I don't see your, um, basically what you did to contribute here. Did you paint the mural? Did you take the pictures? Um, you, took, you took part of it. But what exactly was your was your uh, job here? That's something I think you might be able to clarify here. Okay, I think this is really nice. The images are really cool. I'm wondering if it's possible to kind of balance out the image just a little bit because we have a very light spot here in the center. And this side is a little darker than this one. So it's a little not unbalanced in this image. So I'll maybe try to work on that. Otherwise, I think the mural is really great and it's totally something um, worth you know putting into your portfolio. Also here we have some uh, distortion happening. I'm wondering if it's possible with Photoshop to kind of keep it straight, keep it consistent and to not have this warping happening. All right, so let's take a look here further. Again, the same thing, we have this warping happening. I'm wondering if it's possible to kind of keep it more straight and avoid distortion. Okay, this is a really interesting mural and I think this is a great project to put into your portfolio and I can totally imagine how, you know, um, others might want to hire you to create a mural or to take pictures of their mural. Um, yeah, very nice. Okay, I see there are some very high resolution images. So whenever you work on an image and put it into your portfolio, make sure it's 100 dots per inch and that it doesn't exceed the resolution that's inside the screen already. Just because you want to stay in the minimal um, resolution necessary, um, 
because your image will not have any higher value if you put a very high resolution it will only take a little bit more time to load so here I would definitely try to uh, reduce the size of the image okay yeah it's very nice I love the images that you're taking not just of the mural itself but also of the whole area around it it's um, very interesting cool yeah it's awesome showing the process can also be very valuable to see how people worked on it very nice here I see there is just a little bit um, unsharpness in the image I will maybe correct the um, lens, lens um, settings in Photoshop if you go on to um, uh, da, 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 what is it called lens filter or something like that uh, let me quickly take a look um, it's called let me quickly open the file it's called camera raw filter camera raw filter with that you can you can correct the sharpness here okay all right how are you all doing here on this Friday let me know in the chat um cool yeah i love these images i was wondering if there's a way to kind of organize them better so let's say the beginning of the project will be the mural itself the whole basically image of it and then maybe you could go a little bit more into the process of how the mural was made and then so basically giving it a little bit more structure um so that there is a clear path that you're walking basically right it shows it's not only for me it's it's enough to see those images i understand that it was a mural and people were working on it real hard and it's a really nice mural and you took some really nice pictures of it but for the viewer who potentially might be looking for um, your um, abilities as a designer and as a thinker <clears throat> They might be looking for other things. They might be looking for your perfectionism. How are you, you know, managing the project? How are you organizing it? Are you even organizing it? Are you even deeply thinking about it or not? Um, so giving it organization and structure and thought is so, so crucial in a portfolio a case study like this. Um, I would definitely give it a, t a structure and maybe even add little text passages to describe the project and to describe what everybody else was doing and um, what the thought was behind it and so on. All right, but it's, it is a great project and it looks very, very interesting to me. Um, I'd totally be interested in hearing more of, from you, from your work, if I would see this. Okay, then um, we are looking at abandoned asylum. Um, I would say it's abandoned with ED in the end. So make sure that the copy is, is correct. Abandoned asylum. This is an abandoned asylum in North Carolina. I have a deep fascination in abandoned buildings. Again, it's abandoned. So abandoned with ED in the end. Um, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. these three photos won an award at my college last year cool so you're showing that you were successful at your college but with photography already I think um, it's very interesting to know and uh, the photos are really really interesting really cool yeah I love abandoned places too I think I think this is super cool oh it says I see you creepy 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 um yeah this is very nice i love how the tree kind of covers a part of the building and um and you basically have this part that is more um open and visible so um it's a very interesting image i think i think that's definitely really really cool you, def you definitely did a good job here um i'm wondering i'm wondering if there's more to it maybe i don't know maybe you could extend this project to um you know looking for things that you found maybe like specific objects that you found and maybe finding a story to them i'm wondering if there's a way to find a little bit more background about this asylum and go more into depth into this project and maybe even create an installation in it um, and then take pictures of it i think that would be really really interesting to see 
cool i love it no i think it's a really great project and it seems like that you are just out of college so you're doing great you're doing good artsy fartsy photos <laughs> It's, that's funny. I mean, it's a funny, it's a funny title, but um, I think for t this is a really co cool image. I think you see something in images, uh, you see something in composition. It's just that you need to find meaning in it, right? It's all about the story behind the image. It's all about storytelling, and um, maybe there is a concept that you can find. So let's say framed everyday objects or so you, you will basically place a frame um, around different objects and basically find a concept around it find a concept and extend this project i think that would be really interesting um to do in this case because i see that you have this um vision and you love I mean, if I would see this, I would totally take a picture of it too. And I would be like, wow, this is so cool. Because usually we frame things that are totally out of this world and totally amazing, like some artwork and paintings. But this is just an everyday object and it looks so interesting in this frame, right? In this golden um, antique frame. So maybe there is a way to uh, extend this to a, a longer case study, to a longer project where you basically reuse this concept onto different objects. That will be really, really interesting. Okay. Yeah, this is interesting. I love the, um, the flow of the lines here. I think, I think that's what you saw here and I see what you're seeing. It's just that um, to be able to work with that in terms of a project, because this is, these are a lot of different kinds of images and they all have their thought behind it. I'm wondering if you can extend those images to, um, <clears throat> to a collection of images that have the same concept. I think that would be really interesting because that will show that you really understand the concept of something, that you can um, make it abstract and apply it to other things, right? Cool. I'm wondering if you can do the same thing here. So maybe concentrate on the layout of the lines and so on in uh, similar constructions like this one. So maybe there are different other trailers um, that have this similar build, but maybe a different shape or a different arrangement of those wooden, um, wooden, um, what do you call them planes <clears throat> yeah so make make a project more conceptual so you know finding a concept in something and repeating it over and over i think that would really help you um, create better projects cool and then you don't have this random collection of images that you think all have something you know but they all kind of belong together and follow a certain guideline <clears throat> cool yeah i think here um you could a little bit work on this image because it kind of looks a little bit warped the lines are not very straight i see what you saw here and i i understand that this architecture is just simply amazing and i'm wondering if there's a way to kind of reduce the lens um depth or width and I'm, I'm not sure what it's called but to reduce distortion here. Cool. Okay, this is a very interesting lighting here. I see, I see what you see. I see what you see. Cool. This is awesome. I love this. And again, here you have found a concept for, for things, right? The concept here is how architecture basically is designed around nature. So why don't you go with that as a concept and um, cre uh, and create a whole research based on that uh, where you find places and spots and um, where nature kind of is dominant and architecture goes around it right so um, I'm wondering if that can also be a single project by itself I think totally you have so many really cool concepts that you saw here and you you, you shouldn't extend on them you should find similar things and take images of them as well to show a concept yeah, I, I I can see what you see. I am I'm, the way I'm l looking at this. I'm lo when I'm walking around the place, I'm seeing similar things that, that you see. So I understand that you think um, 
that this is <clears throat> artsy fartsy, right? That it's artsy because you have some deeper thoughts when, when looking at this. You have some emotion that's being awaked, right? Here, the nature kind of overwhelms and nature is more powerful than what humankind has built. So this is a concept, this is a very strong concept um, that you can extend on. All right, Carissa, I think you, you have, you're doing such amazing job and uh, doing photography. I think you just have to um, understand it a little bit better, dig deeper and um, write a better uh, description, write, think more about it. Think about, <clears throat> think about what you see. What is it that you see that kind of inspires you or awakes a certain feeling in you? Find that concept and find other similar situations where that happens. I think you can create some really amazing projects based on that and concentrate on photography. I know it's not easy to be a photographer these days, but I think you do have an eye for that. And I think you do, um, you do see things that are uh, sticking out of you know the regular. Cool. Uh, there are some of the designs that I did while in school. Some of the first designs I have ever done. Okay, yeah, this is this is cool. I see you had did some uh, really cool experiments here with the, with the divide tool probably here as well. Um, very nice vanish. I love that. This is very strong. This is very strong because you're saying vanish, and I don't even see the age, but um, I know that it's there because it's vanished, right? So I love it. This one is really really strong here. Um, okay. Uh, here I'm wondering what is the purpose of this and why so many colors because we have different different tones here going on we have this very very dark black we have this red yellow blue purple I'm wondering what is the concept behind this maybe if you could clarify if there was some deeper thinking here it would be nice divide it yeah that's cool that's that works well I would even keep it more minimalistic and um, just keep the line the same width like this eye so by just ex extending those two points to the top and those two po points to the bottom and again we have something in the presentation happening here we have this little white line i would try to avoid that so whenever you export an image try to extend the background just a little bit above the artboard just so that um it doesn't show this white line here movement gym let your body move okay this is interesting. I think since 2020 is a little tiny because you have to imagine that this logo will be, you know, sized down a lot. Let's say you want to use it on the website, you will size it down a lot. So um, since 2020 won't be legible, just as let your body move might be a little too tiny. I would maybe keep it more simple and write movement gym and then maybe in the middle since 2020 or something like that. And then maybe um, the slogan could be let your body move. All right. Minty, minty tea shop. Okay, interesting. I'm wondering why you did all this warping here. It does not look very natural because um, the text is not just warped like that. It's also warped like that, right? So, so not just like that, but also like that. <laughs> um, I would avoid that because it's. It seems like the cup has some weird warping on it, right? And also this frame, I'm not sure if that's necessary. I would just put minty here a little bit smaller on top if that's something that you want to do. Also, we have some a line missing here, around here. Because if you look at the cup, right? If you look at the cup, you don't just have, you have one line that basically runs all around here. And that also creates a shadow because it has a shape and you're missing that here completely. I will maybe keep it minimalistic and not work too much with uh, gradients here. Also, if I look at the, t at the leaves, um, they look very complex to me. I would maybe, maybe make them more minimalistic, maybe two leaf shapes that are kind of located next to each other. I think that will be more, um, will work a little bit better. But I think from here, I think divided is strong. If you keep it simple, if you just keep the same width, um then vanish is very strong here and maybe you can wor work out similar things here that are more minimalistic but have very strong um, meaning 
Okay, Carissa, hopefully this was helpful. I think your portfolio is great. I think you're in a good way. Keep on doing things. Keep on giving things meaning. I think that's what you really, really need to hear. Find the concept behind the things that you're that you're seeing and find the same concept. So recently um, I've started noticing the like distorted reflections in the glass buildings. And um, when you like pass by, you can see things being really weird and moving super distorted. And I thought that that was so fascinating to me that I started taking pictures of that and videos of that. And that's a concept, you know, that's a concept. Just that, just like you have a concept here of, um, you know, framing everyday objects on the street um, or finding a, uh, finding a, you know, a pattern in um, constructions like this. So just keep it conceptualized. All right, thank you so much for submitting. Next one up, we have Ben Jackson. And you can see Ben is super duper into illustration and he has done some work for Google. Let's take a look at that. That sounds very interesting to me. All right, we have some 3, 3D work going on here, it seems. Um, some abstract objects mixed up with some very organic um, objects like, like uh, blankets. Ooh, guys, 3D and you know creating organic things is so complicated so i think you did a really great job here ben and let's take a look further um i'm wondering if there's a way to kind of create a flow here between the images so that they're all aligned on uh, the same way or maybe you can create a grid so that you will put these two images together if you don't want to make them too large um yeah i think you can work a little bit on the layout just a little bit all images start as gray painted sets uh, all color is added in post these images were spotted for dust and all lines were rendered seamless. Shadows are were altered or added into create uh, into to create the final image. Color was added in post. In congruence design team with rough approximations of design. In congruence design team with rough approximations of design and color. I feel like you can make this a little bit more simple to read. Um, but it's uh, in all in all, it's a great description. You're not saying, oh, I did this, I did that. You're kind of keeping it general. I think that's a really good uh, way to do that. Retouching and compositing of web banners for Google. Maybe you can um, give the caption a little bit more size, um, especially Google and um, this you know, subheader. This can stay the way it is. But right now, this is the first thing that I started reading just because it was kind of a description. I was looking for a description. But um, this can, I think this part here can be larger. All right, and then work on the layout here. Um, I love the images. I think honestly, I would love to see them. Okay, yeah, there we go. I see them in larger size now. Um, it looks very organic. I think you did a great job here creating, um, creating the renders for that. I'm wondering if that, those are actually renders or if those are real objects because it does look like as if you kind of put the scenery together. Not, not sure. Okay. But that's confusing. That's actually making me think that it's a real setup. Okay. But the candles, yeah, okay, no, I actually. Some parts like this staircase here in the background is confusing to me. So yeah, I do have to think about it and probably that's the purpose here. Very nice. This does look like a 3D render to me. Um, or composition even maybe. Okay. Um, love the fabric in the background. I think it looks really cool. You did a great job here kind of using 3D. I, that's as far as I understood because you're talking about renders. Um, using 3D software to kind of create very organic looking, uh, very natural looking images, but then also creating compositions like this one, which are not very natural. So kind of having this contrast and making me think, is it real? Is it not real? That's good. I like it. Okay, very nice. Let's read uh, again what exactly. All images start as gray painted, green painted sets. All color is added. okay. So those are actually sets that um, are painted. These images were spotted for dust and all. 
things were rendered. Okay, yeah, I, I'm still wondering about the technique used here. But that's that's okay, that's fine. You don't have to tell me your technique. As long as I'm finding those images, you know, interesting to look at and um, cool. So you're presenting some products here. I'm wondering if, there, if it's possible. Um, I see some lines here that um, are kind of confusing. If you look at this little line here, this dark line, I don't think it should be there. Um, I think these objects were added to the... Where are they added? I feel like you can do work, you can work a little bit more detailed on these things here. Yeah. Totally. <clears throat> also, I'm wondering if this is glass, there should be some reflection in it, right? Same here. Here as well. But there is some reflection here, which is cool. And I see some... Is it dust? It seems like dust. Anyway, so I would do some more retouching work on this. Okay, I see. So you're showing how you basically have created the set. <clears throat> Very nice. It's super cool. I think it looks super fun. Man, I would love to do something like that. Cool. Interesting. Yeah, I love that. No, I think this is an amazing project, honestly. And you did a great job kind of uh, putting all of these scenes together. Um, the only thing I would really recommend you that's really crucial for your portfolio is working on the layout here um, Maybe putting some images together and or you know resizing them Otherwise great job Let's take a look at your illustration because I saw that you are very proficient here. Oh I love this one. I think you this is so so cool. I love this guy. It reminds me of um, Aladdin <laughs> on the bicycle Super cool. I, I love the way you show the speed with, you know, um, uh, creating ellipses instead of perfect circles here on the bicycle. It shows that he's actually moving and, you know, even his tires be are bending from, from all the riding. Super cool. Love that. Okay, this is really cute. I love how you added texture in here. Um, really nice. It looks like... Um, Oh yeah, okay, I see some like tiny, tiny details here that you might work on, like these little imperfections here, um, this placement of the pens maybe, um, this I don't even mind those little imperfections and texture, I think that's cool. <clears throat> I love the way, I love the textures that you picked here for, <clears throat> for the pencils, um, that you have, you know, created those perfect, very perfect shapes and then kind of painted on top with a very rough um, pencil tool. Very nice, I love that. It almost looks like crayon, um, super cool. I'm wondering if you can add some more of that and using the same thickness that you did here, maybe in, in the other parts so that it's more consistent. Here I also see a little bit of imperfection, um, especially this part, maybe you can just remove that. Um, yeah, I think this part is okay, although there are some points where I'm like, mm. here as well. Um, here we have a little sharp edge in it. Um, but otherwise, I think I love the colors. I love the combination of perfect like shapes that are, you know, vector shapes and then just like sketching on top. I think that's a really, really great technique. And I feel like you've been exploring a technique here because this is a different one. And I feel like that's maybe your more original technique to kind of work more vector based and uh, with gradients and stuff and here you you were kind of exploring um, new things which I love I think you did a great job here now this is cool hi cool let's take a look into detail and if you want to avoid people to see um, you know the little details and the little imperfections um, you have a zoom uh, in here happening. So if there's a way to turn it off, maybe you can even avoid people seeing all these things. But this one is way better. Here you did, you were way more precise with a vector drawing. Um, here just a little edge I see right here and a little, you know, a little curve that maybe would not belong there. Um, cool. Yeah, that's awesome. No, I think you're doing you're doing a great job, um, you know, finding your own style. And I feel like right now you have two styles that are pretty 
um, dominant to me and it's this one where you kind of create these uh, vectors and you do some sketching on top and also this one that kind of has a little bit of texture in it but uh, mostly working with gradients so um, I think those two are very strong and um, this one is even you know without any texture maybe you can add some to to keep it consistent um, I think as an illustrator it's really important to working out your style your specific way of illustrating things because there's so many ways you know using color using uh, different um, pen settings and so on so Jeremy is saying cool illustrations yay Val is saying this is awesome thank you for doing this of course um, Diman is saying can you please check my Jira portfolio yes Diman please you know what you should do send me your link please because right now I'm not uh, I'm not that good at noting things so I have a list that I put on my phone so if you go on to my Instagram you can just send me a, a message you just send me a message with your link okay so just shoot me a DM on my Julia Maselska um, Instagram and just send me a message with your link to your dribble and I can review it in the next weeks okay all right super cool love this one as well it's kind of supporting the style that we were just talking about so I am um, for you I would maybe try to define your style and um, work a little bit more into that um, work it out better maybe find color palettes that you're reusing over and over so that your potential client will be able to see um, you know what you what you're specialized in what's your what do you specialize in what type of illustration because usually they're looking for a certain style right so um, if you have a certain style you're more likely to be hired for a specific project because then the client can make sure that you're using this specific style on their designs as well so I think it will be interesting for you to explore um, a specific style cool I think this this style here is very strong and um, works super well this will m work more for like corporate let's say if I'm looking looking at the Google page um, there will be something for the Google doodles so usually they have like a little image here um, sometimes those are illustrations and um, that's something I'll totally see there yeah super cool more corporate very nice I love your work I think you're doing great um, I would just maybe keep it more consistent and um, even in terms of using backgrounds here so here you have these two like blocky backgrounds and here you have none which I really love to be honest because it kind of gives a space all around it and um, yeah I think you're doing a great job bridges rock gym cool okay Logo design and motion graphic. I love that. I'm just thinking about the frame around here. If um, if there is a way to avoid this little corner piece here, this little line that goes around. Hmm. If that's possible, I think that will be really, really comforting for me. Specifically for me because it's kind of disturbing right now to see this little line happening around your work. Which should be the focus, right? Okay, let's take a look here. Print and web design okay so you did some print and web design I'm seeing um, I'm wondering what size this is this brochure I'm thinking it's probably uh, like a trifold double fold brochure and I'm seeing that there are some parts missing actually the climb and fitness are kind of cut off and here the circle as well I'm wondering what happened there um, also I'm seeing that these two parts are not um, the same width so this part seems to be a little bit um, not more narrow and this one seems to be a little bit more wide so I'm wondering how is it that you put that brochure together yeah make sure to take a look at the details here um, take a look at the details do not cut off things like that here on the sides here as well the circle gets those little imperfections on the sides so make sure to keep it's probably made in in um, what's it called in in design and you probably had a frame that you fitted the logo into um, or this whole artwork into so make sure to extend this frame just a little bit to the sides okay 
Otherwise, I think the images you picked are good. This one seems to be a little pixelated. Maybe find images that have a better resolution. Um, okay. I'm wondering if there's a way to kind of create a cohesiveness in the colors used in the images. Because here we have different colors. We have red, orange, blue, and so on. I'm wondering if you can um, maybe tone it down just a little bit so that you can concentrate on the brand itself. Also, I would try to avoid drop shadows in print because it can look really um, imperfect once it's printed because uh, drop shadows are something printers sometimes misunderstand and whew, yeah, drop shadows can be difficult sometimes. So I would, I would make sure to kind of find another way to make the logo stick out maybe even placing it on you know on a on a block that kind of is half transparent overlaying the image something like that i would avoid especially if you have such a strong drop shadow i would avoid that okay let's take a look here this is very interesting i love the way you kind of unified all these images by creating this um, square grid I think you did a great job here here um, I have this I see this little piece on the grid that's kind of sticking out a little bit I'll make sure that the grid is covering the whole um, the whole surface of the photo and the, so that you don't have this little line happening here it's all about the details I know I'm really sometimes I'm really like into details but I feel like if you really want to attract clients you do need to be a little bit more perfectionist in, in, in these things all right, membership benefits. Oh, I love the, oh, that's the animation that's happening in the video in the background. I thought it's part of this, um, part of this design. Okay, here, um, so you're showing a certain, I, I'm guessing it's a flyer, right? Or like a brochure. So here I would create a mock-up that shows how, with the size of the brochure. There are a, a lot of different mock-ups that you can use. Um, let's see, if it's a trifold, um, I would maybe look for a trifold brochure mock-up and there are tons of them you can even find free ones um, buh, 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 buh. something like this maybe so that you can see um, here this one is free even you can free, free download for free it's very clean it's very neutral so I would totally um, go for something like that and show how the designs are placed on this mock-up so that it's easier to understand right because you have right now you have a bunch of images that are kind of placed next to each other it seems like it's a trifold to me so this is the outside but what's the ins uh, this is the inside but what's the outside um, yeah I think a, a mock-up would really really help here to showcase the design climbing is better with friends okay so you have created a bunch of different ads I think it's great to show for first-time consumers only. I'm wondering if there's a way to kind of um, make this typeface, you know, pop more. Right now, it's kind of melting a little bit with the image, so it makes it a little bit difficult to read. I think this yellow work, works really well here. I think it makes it really well legible because you have this very dark background. Um, yeah, but otherwise, I think the layout is pretty good. Um, you could align things here on the right on the right side as well, like you did on the left side, so that the logo kind of ends just where the text ends, and you have the same spacing like you do here. So that um, yeah, you can even make the logo just a little bit smaller um, to make the uh, the guy visible. I know you wanted to showcase how he's climbing up this um, you know this rock, but um, just cr create a. A seamless layout that goes all around I think that will help a lot um, okay uh, what else what else here the distance between the um, let me can I zoom in here I can't okay so the distance between the lines here seems to be a little large and that also creates a certain disconnect disconnectivity so you want to say a bottomless member guest passes right is that I think that should belong together right now I'm reading guest passes bring as many friends as you want so I would totally you know push these two lines closer together and then keep the same distance with the, that's fine here I feel like that works um, because you were trying to keep it consistent just like here 
but yeah, I think there is a, a little, little bit of work that can be done. Here as well, you're using this color that kind of melts with the background just a little bit with this rock here in, in the back with this thingies that you climb on. I, I don't know what they're called, but um, maybe choose a color that will stick out a little bit more. Um, yeah, here you did a good job in terms of legibility. It's way better legible than this part. Here, I love the way you kind of put up, put up like a half transparent block to kind of make it better legible, obviously. I would maybe give it a little bit more breathing room at, room, room at the top, so I would extend the rectangle just a little bit to the top. Okay, membership package, intro to climbing. I'm wondering if there's a better way to create a hierarchy here because a membership package is something that's like sticking out a lot to me but I think intro to climbing is the key point here so I'm wondering if um, if you can use a certain color to make this stick out more and maybe size down membership package and use a typeface color that you have used here before maybe this purple will work here as well instead of the black Black and white builds a very strong contrast. Okay. Jeremy is asking, do gradients always work well for print design or do we have to be careful with those? Honestly, I would stay away from from um, uh, from drop shadows. Oh, you're talking about gradients, okay. We were talking about drop shadows earlier, but drop shadows kind of are gradients. So yeah, I would totally stay away from gradients as well because um, because printers sometimes have a difficulty to kind of translate this flow into a print. Uh, recently I have printed out something and it came out like it didn't come out as I imagined it because sometimes the colors don't mix right and it's just very confusing for the printer to create a gradient. It's a very challenging thing to do. So. If you can, stay away from it. Stay away from gradients and drop shadows. But if you need to, experiment. Try it out. Try out if the colors that you're using are working. And I have a little quick tip for you guys. I know I have to move on, but... Uh, da -da -da -da. Let's, just, let's just use a regular size. So, when you're creating gradients, just a quick quick jump into gradients so when you're creating a gradient what you have to do is so let's say the gradient uh, let me make a gradient here okay so uh, let's say I want to go from yellow to blue in the middle we will find this gray area because the colors they're mixing together, but they are translating into gray, into the gray area to mix together, right? Because um, the full color of something is basically full light, right? And the dark tone of something is less light, right? So here, the colors, instead of mixing together, they're actually just decreasing the lightness and they are coming together in this gray part which you don't want obviously so what you need to do is when you're creating a gradient between two very different colors put a middle color in between so here I would put so see this color here is a weird weird gray we don't want that we want it to be nice and we don't want obviously we don't want no purple but the color between blue and uh, yellow is green right on this on the uh, on the here so let me let me go back and let me show you guys the difference so this is the gradient before and this is the gradient after let me edit this gradient real quick here um, instead of using this gray color I'm using a green that's in between so see the difference, how much difference it makes. And here I would even include one more to kind of make it even better. Uh, let's see, it's, it needs to be a darker tone, something like that. 
something like that. But do you see the difference how colorful this is and how gray this is in the middle? So I would definitely make sure that your gradients, if you're using any, that they are well made. All right, now you can see my whole calendar, great. Okay, so my friends, let's go, um, let's go, let's continue, let's continue with this. So uh, Ben, I think you can work um, more on, you know, showcasing your designs using mockups here. And let's jump into another project. Iconography, interesting. Okay, so I'm wondering how these things would look like on a colored background. Because uh, usually what you do when you, when you use these illustrations, you put them on a certain background, right? Background color. Here they're all on white. I'm wondering how this would look like on, let's say, a yellow. Uh, because we have a lot of white happening and it's melting in my background here. So in order to showcase this design better, I would put it on the background that sets a contrast to it so that you can perfectly see the illustration. Right now, I don't really see that part. It's kind of disappearing, right? Uh, whereas here, it works pretty well. Here again, I have this very light part that kind of melts with the background. Um, yeah. Otherwise, no, I think you're doing a good job, uh, you know, using gradients to put things like that together. Um, maybe it's something that you can combine with your other illustration style. So maybe those iconography, that that iconography can be used in this, you can, maybe you can create it in this similar style that you have been, you know, so successfully using in the past. I'm wondering if you can bring all of your out of all of the elements that you're creating into a similar style and create yourself an identity with that your own brand basically um, as an illustrator as a designer um, and those things that is are that I'm thinking of and the second thing obviously layout of your uh, presentation and um, using mock-ups for print uh, materials like here use mock-ups even even here I would try to mock it up to show what is what is it used for is it used for for an ad online or is it used as a print ad right um okay if it's used on social media use a social media mock -up. okay ben i think you're doing a great job i think there are a couple of things you can improve on hopefully this was helpful for you now let's jump onto felipe's portfolio felipe is doing a motion design as far as i remember let's take a look again Okay, so we have some videos that you have created. Um, I'm not a motion designer again. I think I was telling you that last time. But um, I think the presentation here looks interesting. I'm missing descriptions. So I want to know what was the goal here? What, um, what did you want to show with this video? Okay. Okay. So we have a visualization here. I would love to know more about it. I would love to see more information here saying, okay, this has been used for that and that and that. Um, then I'm wondering why is this illustration in the same project? Because I think, or in this animation, the same project, I think you can maybe extend this animation to a, a series of animations and put them together into a, a separate project, right? Just the same thing like here, I will put these things together in one project. I will divide them. I think that might be a thing that I've told you last time as well. Okay, promotional video for design company. Yeah. So you have the, all of those design elements, right? You have the logo, you have the colors, you have the images that you have used. Maybe create a whole case study around this. You know, showing the, the logo, showing um, um, the different things that you were thinking of uh, and make it a separate case study. Because this is all, I know you want to put all your motion work together, but you can make separate projects that will be able, where I'm like looking at them and I'm able to um, see who you've been working with. Because if I'm an automotive client, I'm not necessarily interested in seeing all the other things. Okay, here, invitation to reopen semi jewelry company. Okay. Okay, I think it's a really cool visualization how this card basically works, that it's um, unfolding. I love the music here as well, it's really nice. 
I'm wondering if there's more happening here than the image zooming in. Okay. Let me see the backside. So, okay. It's a very interesting visualization. I'm wondering if it would not be um, cool to kind of also show a mock-up. So like a Photoshop mock-up of this card being open, being turned around, being closed, and so on. So that you have all these things in one, um, in one side and then adding the motion design to it to show how this works. But I think this is a really great project. I would love to, to hear more again, a little bit more description, and I would make it a known case study as well. Okay. It looks like this is the same company. So why not make a, a project called Luminati, right? That would be nice. Because you have created several things for them. Very nice. Okay, pull the grill. I'm wondering if it, oh, okay. So this is just an animation that you have created for the background of this. Okay, interesting. I'm wondering if <clears throat> if it will be better to kind of swap the images a little bit more fast. But I think you're doing a great job here and I love the way you present it as well. So you're presenting it in context, not just, you know, the image by itself. And again, this could be an own project by itself. Okay. This is really nice. Again, I feel like this could be an own project by itself, kind of extending it a little bit more by showing the different elements, the different colors that you've used, who is the client, talk a little bit more into depth. Okay. Okay. Okay, interesting I, again I would love to know more because there is barely um, promotional video for jewelry lunch um, yeah I would love to know more who's the client what you know what's the target audience and so on okay I think this is your own video that you have created so um, I think I have told I might have told you that last time but try to create projects um, separate them I think you have this one here already yeah so this is your is this your personal branding because it's I think it was right I think it's your personal branding and then it's also combined with um, with other work that you have done so make sure to create a better structure in your uh, in your portfolio and separate the projects so that they belong together and extend a little bit more upon them how are you all doing in the chat? Hopefully it's interesting for you to see. Um, Jotirmi is saying you might get copyright notice for that music. Well, okay, let's see. We'll see, we'll see. Um, okay, cool. So, um, Felipe, I think I told you last time already that you need to um, separate your projects and go a little bit more into depth. And... Um, Otherwise, I think you're doing a great work and you have some amazing work and I'm wondering what calligraph design really means as a brand for yourself because um, calligraph for me has to do with lettering. It has to do with, you know, um, writing, doing things by hand and your work really does not have to do nothing with that. So uh, maybe I would reimagine your personal branding and um, concentrate more on, on motion design and make it you know, make make your personal branding motion concentrated. Okay, but I think your work is really cool. I think you're doing a, a good job. Again, I'm looking forward to see what you are going to do with that. All right, next up we have Daniel Soto Design. Very nice. We can see Daniel um, is very much into illustration and um, vector graphics. Then we also have some logo design going on here. We have some um, branding, we have some social media, a very wide variety of work, but we can see that Daniel, this sticks out to me, Daniel has been working a lot in um, graphic illustration, right? So vector illustration. 
And um, we can see that Daniel has been featured in Fresco and in Adobe Capture, which is awesome. I think that's already kind of really, really cool when you're being featured. It's a great chance for you to be discovered. And um, let's take a look at this Fanflix magazine. Okay. So it's probably, I am assuming, I would love to have a description here, but I am assuming it's a magazine for fans of Netflix. Um, very nice. I will maybe make the cover even red so it kind of represents their logo a little bit better. Um, okay, like you did here. Oh, look, maybe maybe you can use the same typeface for, for the cover so that it kind of is more cohesive. And um, I love the way you put the mock-ups together. You have this line that's kind of going down all the way and you're putting these mock-ups in a little a bit of an angle, which it makes it very natural looking. And I can, I can almost imagine it laying on out on my table and you're adding those background images, really, really nice work. You made them really cohesive. I love that. I think you're doing great here. <clears throat> Also, the layout of the pages is awesome. I'm wondering if the te text is not a little bit too large because if you have a magazine size, this might be a little bit too large. Okay. <clears throat> um, here I see a little layout um, trouble where the L is kind of very close to the, um, to the text, but otherwise the layout here is really great. Doing a great job. Cool. Yeah, in general, I love the presentation here. I love the presentation, how you create this flow, this line that kind of goes all the way down. Um, I will maybe make sure that the line is not crossing the um, crossing the magazines so that the line kind of stays in the background. The magazine pops up from that. Uh, yeah, otherwise, I think it's a really nice case study um, showing off your capability of putting together a layout. Um, very nice. And those are all series. Oh my God, La Casa de Papel. This is so good. I have seen that. It's, it's one of the best series. I think it's the series of the year for me. Okay, Breaking Bad, of course. Really great. Fanflix. Yeah, nice. No, I love it. I love it. I'm wondering if you can bring a little bit more of the red color to the front of the, pa of the page of the cover. Great job. I think this is a good project. Next one um, will be geometric and animal illustrations. So see guys, um, so for all of you who have been doing illustrations, I think Ben was, uh, was there earlier with some illustration. I would show something like this for the presentation, right? A little intro, um, geometric animal illustrations, and then a little intro, <clears throat> and then show, showcasing how you're creating the illustrations, right? The different gradients you're using and the different, um, maybe the different shapes that you're kind of combining together to something new each time. Um, very nice. No, I think you're doing a great job here. Um, you're keeping it very cohesive in the layout. Look at that. You're showing the gradients. Again, we, should, we have the gradient and the colors. Love the noise that you put on top. I think it creates a really nice texture to it. <clears throat> um, again, really nice, very cohesive. I can this project I think is really amazing to show off your illustration skills. It's great. And it's very extensive, so it's not just one illustration, it's a bunch of them, so very, very nice. Look, you can buy the prints, that's cool. A good way, by the way, guys, to make money, sell your um, some templates, sell some typefaces, sell some mock-ups. Those things are always great. Oh, I love that, this is amazing. I love the animation that's happening. I have not expected that. Honestly, I have looked at that. It looks it looks static to me, but then suddenly it kind of started blinking at me and doing like that. <laughs> Very nice. Stranger Things. Cool. Oh, I love how you translated those characters into um, into illustrations and you give them just a slight movement. I love that. I think you did such a great job here and very co cohesive very consistent love the color palette here love the typefaces that you f that you picked i was wondering maybe if if there's a way to keep the same typeface size for all of the names right and here you have the l um, as a lower case so maybe there's a way to keep it more consistent in terms of naming otherwise everything else is very consistent and looks very very great doing a great job here cool Ooh, 
that's there's something exciting happening here oh my gosh kind of cute and creepy at the same time cool i love it i love the close-ups that you are presenting here to show your illustration skills because you are doing such a great job uh, creating geometrical illustrations very nice i love it i could also imagine a set of cards uh, made from these illustrations i think that would be really really cool very nice i love this ending here very cool waffles and flowers very nice i love it i think it's a great project let's take a look at this one real madrid la liga cool love the color um colors here you're doing a great job keeping it very um perfect and i love the way you kind of um blur out the side here at the top to kind of um seem it a little bit more make it seem more interesting here you go from rough sketch ink sketch vector ink shades and highlights very nice i love the to see the process how you created that really cool i love the way you put um texture into the into the typeface here into the logo um makes it definitely way more interesting cool this is awesome i think you're doing great work no honestly i think daniel you're on a really really good way i would add a little description about yourself here where are you from what are you doing what do you like what's your speciality what do you want to work on in the future i'm also wondering if all of these projects represent what you want to be doing in the future because i feel like you're very much specialized in illustrations like these so why not you know create your whole portfolio around this and keep it consistent and um so that when whenever somebody gets on, on on your page they know you're specialized in doing this specific style of illustration so why not hire you for that you know that's awesome i see before you were kind of going all over the place you know doing some social media here some logo design there some paco fish let's see paco fish redesign oh it seems familiar i feel like i have i have seen your portfolio already or maybe I have seen somebody else's portfolio that has the same project. But um, no, I love it. I think you're doing great work. Um, keep it going. Keep it coming. Love your logo as well. Um, everything is very well legible. I'm wondering if this is centered though. Uh, it seems like the top has a little bit more space than the bottom. Um, take a look and make sure that the, um, the brand name is centered inside the circle. Cool. Great job, Daniel. I think you're doing great keeping keep it coming and we have last but not least rashmin kaur arora cool and rashmin is from india i love this i can see already some um indian gods in illustration form very nice this is probably i think this is shiva right shiva um cool i love it I think you're you're really great um, wondering if there is a way to keep the layout consistent to kind of keep the lines on the sides um, consistent I know it's a very large image okay I'm wondering if there is a way to kind of create a layout where you put place this image on a little bit more of the left side and these images um, kind of underneath each other uh, on the right side so create a grid that kind of keeps it more consistent Okay, interesting. Okay, it seems like this is Shiva uh, in her everyday life, in her daily routine, you know, bathing in flowers and studying and, um, you know, taking selfies and um, meditating. But then there is someone else here that I'm not sure how this, how this belongs together. I think totally this could be one project by itself you could show close-ups of your illustrations here. I think those are really amazing illustrations. Write a little bit of a description. What do you think? Uh, like, how did, did this come along? Are there any previous sketches that you did on paper, maybe? I think this is really cool. You're doing a great job in uh, illustration. I think that's totally a thing as far as I see it right now. Let's see what this is. Happy Lilliput is a kids premium celebration wear online clothing store, which is spe especially for theme parties for the little ones. 
cool. I think it's a really cute logo. I love the design here. I love the style. Um, the circles could kind of implement the same kind of um, imperfections. So that when you are creating those circles, they might have the same stitching lines. They might have the same kind of shape. Um, but otherwise, the color palette is amazing. Love the typefaces you picked. The arrangement of the elements inside the logo are great. Um, have you done them? Okay, color palette, as I say, it is really cool. Love this mock up, love the color that you use in the background. Premium celebration wear for little kids. I'm wondering if there is not too much space in between, and why would you uh, put three exclamation marks? Maybe um, if you put an exclamation mark, then just one, or I would not even put one, I would just put a dot. I would maybe put it um, divided into two lanes, uh, two lines. Premium celebration. Oh, or you could write premium celebration wear for little kids. Just make sure that it's easy to read because right now it's reading premium celebration. What's the celebration? And then wherefore? Okay, little kids. And then it's kind of like you're screaming it out, little kids because you have all these exclamation marks, right? So make sure it's very intuitive to read. So I would write premium celebration wear for little kids, right? It kind of divides the information a little bit better. Okay, otherwise the mock-up is awesome. Did a great job here picking the background color. Nice, um, okay. Um, this is interesting. I would love to see a little bit more of this. So how, if you're designing an app or a website, how does it look like? What, what are the typefaces that you're using there? Go a little bit more into depth. That can definitely um, value, um, you know, give, bring more value into this project. Okay, here I can see you created your own mockups. Um, I, I love the way you kind of put the connection here to this, but this one is not connected to anything. So I'm wondering if it's possible to kind of make this larger and make, make the connection here as well. So it, they both kind of come from the same place. Here, um, I see you did a really nice work putting together a mock-up. Um, it looks a little bit unnatural right now. It adds some noise in these parts or may, maybe add some paper texture that would make it very interesting. Cool, love it. I think this is a great mock-up. Um, yeah, I think, honestly, Rashmin, you're doing a great job. I'm wondering what suits you better, illustration or branding? Because you need to figure out for yourself what kind of clients do you want to attract? Do you want to work more with illustration clients or do you want to work more with branding clients? And once you have made that decision, um, make sure to produce more work to attract those exact clients. So let's say you want to work more in illustration, create more similar projects like this, right? And go look more into depth so that whenever somebody looks at this, they will be like, oh, okay. So this person is really into illustration. I should hire them for some illustration work. Cool. I love these posters. It's a nice poster series. The colors don't seem to be very consistent here because this red does not seem the same red as here. So if you create something like this, reusing the same colors, I would keep it consistent. Okay, this is my favorite blend tool that you have used here. I love the blend tool. Cool. No, I think your posters are awesome. Maybe add some noise here so it, make, it looks a little bit more natural or paper texture. Um, I think that would make it a little bit more natural. Cool. Awesome, Rashwin, I think you're doing a great job. You're on a good way. Um, keep it coming, create more projects. Right now you ho you have five projects. I'll maybe, see, I'm not able to talk anymore. One and a half hours are clearly a long time. So you can add um, maybe three more projects or if you can complete the bottom line as well. Just, you know, keep on creating, keep on putting it out there. Um, and you're on a good way. I love the background here, by the way. It looks really cool. I uh, did a great job here. It's awesome. All right, my friends, we are coming to an end in our today's session. Hopefully you guys had fun watching this and hopefully you will have an amazing weekend. Uh, Valley saying, Daniel, you're so skilled. Yes, Daniel had the, did a great job. Let's take a look at your guys' comments. 
Kyle is saying hello Julia hi Kyle sorry I wasn't reading earlier um, da -da 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 -da. Val is saying I'm doing great learning a lot that's awesome um, Wow, I really enjoy seeing illustrations. Love the ones I saw we saw today. Determine. Yes, today were so many illustration uh, designers, which is amazing. I love illustrations as well. I'm really honestly not that good at them, and I don't have a specific style. But um, I think um, hopefully I could still help somehow. <laughs> All right. Uh, Jotirmi is saying the Stranger Things illustrations are amazing. Yes, the style is awesome. I think it's a very strong style and a uh, great, great job. All right, my friends, thank you so much for joining today and I'm hoping you have a great weekend. I'll see you next week for some more fun stuff. We have our um, branding wheel of fortune coming up. So make sure to st stay tuned on my YouTube channel. Uh, uh, on my Instagram page that's what I meant to say to repeat it again for you guys if you are new to this make sure to follow me on Instagram this is where I'm going to keep you up to date with all of my things that I have going on so that's the best place to find me and to get notifications and to get uh, reminders and all of that stuff so uh, make sure to follow me on Instagram at Julia Maselska just like you will see right here popping up in just a second right there and um yeah and i'll see you there feel free to send me your portfolios for review we're going to be doing them every single friday um as long as i have enough portfolios i'm reviewing five of them every friday so um yeah thanks everyone for joining and i will see you guys soon bye bye <laughs>